Listening out there, it's the Bigfoot Club. <laughs> hey, wacky beginning, yeah. Everybody, hey, wacky beginning, okay? Wacky. Keeping hey, it fresh. Buddy. Hi, boys. Hey, What's up, man? Michael? Hi. Hello, Club Scouts of all timelines. This is Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson. And our super producer, Riley Bray. Woo, boy. There it Um, is. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that uh, fun Patreon unlock episode last week. Uh, (laughs) We're celebrating our four year of doing bcc the other side over at patreon.com slash bigfoot collectors club uh we were gonna drop that later in the month but um things have been a little chaotic over at the clubhouse Mm, yeah so uh we're back for the first time with a new episode in two weeks uh i you know we we can't we don't have to get into it uh bryce bryce was working on a top secret thing riley was under the weather and i was just being just being normal i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you came in like a champ and, and saved the pro saved the program you, you uh, saved the program <laughs> you came up with some some good ideas and uh, we're glad that you did well i appreciate it uh and we we were planning to drop that unlock that episode at the very end of the month but you guys got it a little bit a little bit earlier than planned but don't worry we got a brand new episode for you today there's no guest this week just a good old fashioned clubhouse hang with your friends Michael Bryce and Riley. Yeah. Or the Bookhouse Boys, if you're watching <laughs> Twin Peaks again, like I am. Uh, we were talking about this over on the other side. And we're getting closer to getting Bryce to commit to watching <laughs> Twin Peaks. 48 episodes total and a little movie. Season one is only six episodes. We can start slow. And I think, I think. We can break it up over time and do chunks as part of a TV club series over on the other side. So here's what here's what I need you to do, loyal club scouts. Write into us at Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com with engaging reasons why you want Bryce to watch Twin Peaks. And label <laughs> label oh, those emails. Label those emails why Bryce should peek at Twin Peaks oh, my in the God, subject please. line. You're getting, yes. you're, getting, uh, you're getting the listeners involved now, too. Huh? Yeah, we're going to shame you into watching yeah, this show one way or another. It's yeah. not shame. It's petitioning. Let's see if it's what the people want. And look, we'll do we'll do like seasons and chunks of episode recaps over on the other side. But we'll talk about it a little bit over here, too, because we want to know how you feel about it. I want to know what your reactions are to this show. Come on. It's, sure. It's sure. I mean, it, it would just be me committing to watching. 46 episodes of television by myself because at the end of the night <laughs> you know don and i have to like agree on a show uh you know in order we usually only watch like an hour of something before we finally turn out the lights and pass out from complete exhaustion so you're you're basically asking me to lock myself into my into my man cave and 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 just uh watch tv alone in the dark for the next mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. three months is what you're asking look, that's, look, that's look. called me time Brad. yeah that's that first of all that's called self-care that's called bcc time <laughs> yeah if you got a laptop you can watch twin peaks and and like i said we don't have to cram it all. we can spread this out you yeah. don't have to cram it all in you know what i mean no. listen i love i loved watching when i tried starting i think i got what maybe five six episodes i think in. you got it about four little, or five in maybe four or five it was a slower burn than i thought but i was loving it i mean the mod room the laura palmer who i thought i saw in a dream one time it was all happening for me it just it just stopped a little prematurely wait a minute when did you see laura palmer in a dream Oh, I don't know. I kept like having these like when I when I saw her in that mod room, I was like, I kept having this. I don't know, like I'd seen her in my dream or something before. It was very strange. 
You Bryce. now you have to watch this yeah, show. Now I, I know. I know. Laura Palmer know. is contacting you from the beyond the grave <laughs> and the fictional divide. You have she to wants, do it. She wants me to watch too. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Save me, Bryce. You're my only hope. Exactly. Okay. Well, write into us why Bryce okay. should peek at Twin Peaks in oh, the subject boy. line. Don't forget. And speaking of television, Bryce. Uh, usually we do plugs at the end of the show, and we'll we'll probably do some of those. But I wanted to give you a shot at the top of this episode to plug season three of Expedition Bigfoot. And I think I speak for all of us when I say, "Give us a little tease, please." Oh yeah, well hell yeah, well thank you so much. As as everybody knows out there, you know, for the last three years I've been participating in in a show where we're looking for evidence of Bigfoot, if you can believe it or not. And it all started with this podcast. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm talking about none other than Expedition Bigfoot, which will air its season three premiere on Travel Channel and Discovery Plus uh, on March 20th. This coming week, you do not want to miss it, starting at yeah, 9 p.m. Not Eastern this coming time. week, this week. This week, yes, that's basically what I'm saying, Uh, starting at 9 (laughs) p.m. Eastern time with a pre-show where our very own Dr. Maria Mayer interviews uh, the inimitable Dr. Jane Goodall and asks her about Bigfoot uh, in a show called New Evidence. And then we launch right in to the very first episode of season three. This season is so jam-packed, I cannot wait for everybody to see all the strange activity encountered, the evidence collected, the thermal videos captured. I really think this season is going to blow people's minds. Dude, nice. I'm assuming that she's going to get into, with Jane Goodall, the, the evidence of the primate DNA you guys found in Kentucky Ooh. in that mm. nest. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just guessing. I obviously don't know anything, but that would be... I'm looking forward to that conversation. Interesting. Interesting. Well, there may be a little bit more on that eDNA finding, so you'll have to tune in to find out what. Ooh, that's a tease. That's or a tease you, right you, there. You could just tell us right now. I mean, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why would I want to do that? I want I everybody know. to see it for the in real time as they're watching uh, watching the shoe. Great. I can't wait. That's uh, – when is it again? March 20th? March which is 20th. Yeah, the I'm going to look at – yeah, that's what I was gonna look and find out. That's uh, oh, see, you gotta know March twentieth. D- drum roll, please. Sunday, <clears throat> Sunday nights this on the travel Sunday channel. Sunday night. Hey, Love Real that. Housewives of Salt Lake City's over, so you gotta watch something. Watch Expedition Bigfoot and check yep, out Pam and Tommy are over. So Expedition yep. Bigfoot all the way. Twin Peaks just waiting to begin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> guys, should we do a quick little bit of Klaus? Uh, Klaus. Klaus. Club keeping, Klaus, Klaus yeah. keeping. Yeah, Klaus keeping. Get, I will get the Swiffer. Yeah, let's get, Klaus. let's do the clubhouse keeping. Uh, guys, be a five star listener, like old man Coyote Face, who went over to Apple Podcast and wrote this review. Refreshingly open minded. I found this show through Monsters Among Us podcast, shout out to Derek Hayes and the Monster Among Us podcast crew, and have binged it nonstop since. Hilarious, informative, and so much fun. Also, I want a BCC t-shirt of an eye-patched E.T. holding a natty ice. Yes, please. Listen to Zombie Bigfoot special and you will too. Five stars. Now, nice. this is a great review for a number of reasons. Yeah. I mean, oh, Coyote it's, per- Face. it's almost the perfect review. Thank you, Coyote no- Face. Number one, uh, you plugged, you plugged, you, 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 it directs people to our merch over at wearecampfire.media. Click the shop button. And if you scroll down, you'll see the shirt you're looking for that, of course, is based on the very first Zombie Bigfoot Scary 16 Monster Showdown uh, uh, episode that we did, which is back behind the dreaded paywall on BCC, the other side. Um, I wanted to say, too, that we got some merch announcements coming very soon. Oh, cool. Very soon. Ooh, That's love our merch. All I can say, I've been in the workshop oh, with boy. the graphics design team, and <sighs> I'm very excited to announce what's coming. Bryce and Riley don't even know what's about to drop on their heads. It's going to be epic. So um, do this. Can't Keep wait. your eyes on our Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club for a reveal. Hopefully this week, like maybe very soon. 
If not, probably next week. It depends. <laughs> That's all I can say it about that does. sentence process. It always does. Um, I cannot wait. So this is traditionally what's been going on in the past couple of years is I've just decided to take the reins of um, I don't want to take all the credit for the we all we do talk about what shirts we're going to do, but I've been like sneaking off to the side and then I'll just drop a I'll just drop a design in the BCC text thread and just oh, yeah. wait for your guys's reactions. Well, it's, it's just, right in your wheelhouse. I mean, you're a comic book aficionado. You love great graphic artists, and you love supporting uh, local artists. and And uh, yeah, it's a great it's a great job for you. And listen, Riley and I are always super pleased when a new hot mm-hmm. merch drop comes our way. Man, yes, we love just receiving the fruits of your labor. Being like, <laughs> awesome. This is I again. This this I will say this reveal is going to fit into my pledge of 2022 being the BCC year of fulfillment. Nice. That's all I'm going to say. That's that's my tease for you guys. There you go. Um, I can't wait. Any guesses? You guys want to take a guess? Oh, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, Who won our last 16 showdown? Uh, what was it? Well, uh, you don't want to spoil that, but yeah, you could say the, you could yeah, say the winner right. of that. I, I, bet it, I bet it's from the winner of that. Now it's all starting to come back to me. Yes. I mean, would I'd make love, a great t-shirt. I would love to see some jet ski special merch myself. Oh. Well, <laughs> people would like to see a jet ski special <laughs> jet ski. in right, their podcast right, feed. Right. Guys, we, ha- we haven't forgotten. It uh, depends. That's summer's it coming. Depends. Summer is coming. Summer is coming. That's all I will say. Um, also, that review plugged our uh, Patreon, BCC, The Other Side. Uh, right now, at The Other Side, you can hear our latest Northern Frights episode about Grey Friars Kirkyard and the Mackenzie Poltergeist. Uh, and at the ultra-terrestrial level, you'll get the latest ambient soundtrack by Mr. Riley Bray, pulled mm-hmm. with care from the BCC archives. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was particularly happy with that last one. 48 minutes of sonic bliss. Oh, yep. hell yeah. Pulled yeah. straight from the uh, Roswell saga, part two. That's right. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, we can put away the brooms. It's time to get into some of this show that we got lined up for you guys. What do you say? Sounds so, great. Okay, boys. Well, guess what? You know, we're, what now? Three months into the year. A lot of bad news. Lots of horrible fucking news going on right now. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be nice, a nice little escape to set that aside and tune into some fun news. The kind of news that we like to call... That's right. We got a BCC news dump for you in the first half of the show. I wanted to look back on the past month or two and check out what's been going on in the world of the strange. Nice. Um, So I've got like a weird story for you guys, a couple UFO stories, and then a cryptid story for you. Um, Oh, wow. Yeah, I think we're we're gonna we're gonna Just not, sitting down with Grandpa and reading the newspaper, huh? Yeah, exactly. That's what we're doing. <laughs> oh, I couldn't find a guest this week. Let's read the newspaper. Um, I uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, uh, well, this first story isn't as much of a story as it's just a cool photograph, but it apparently did get passed around the cryptozoology circuit because it does look weird. Uh, you can look at this over to Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club. Check this out. This is from last month. And boys, you should be able to see this mm-hmm. on your computer. Uh, this comes from the Bellingham Herald, the Bellingham Herald, although this was reported in other areas. Monstrous eye seen staring out of the Pacific Ocean in satellite image. Scientists say mm. now. Okay, Stro- that headline's a bit of a stretch. I don't right. think any scientist <laughs> said that there's actually a monster's eye staring out of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, that's an air quotes scientists, right? Right. There. Yeah, and it's yeah. plural too. Like many scientists had pointed <laughs> right. that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a photo of a basically a satellite photo of a swirling hurricane approaching Alaska. And it does appear at the very center of the the eye of the storm. It does appear yeah. to be like there is a giant glaring eyeball 
looking off to the right. Uh, but here's the story. A satellite panning north of the North Pacific this week picked up something strange at the center of a cloud formation, a huge eye. It was spotted south of Alaska on February 13th and posted on Facebook by scientists at the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies, CIMSS, Smith, in Wisconsin. Anyone else see a whale's eye and face within the very large low over the North Pacific Ocean today? CIMSSS wrote, Incredible detail in this enhanced water vapor image seems to reveal an eye glancing out sideways from the center of the storm approaching Alaska's Aleutian Islands. No explanation was offered, leaving it up to the viewer to debate the possibilities. Mm. The photo, which has been shared by cryptozoology and mythology Facebook groups, very reliable news source, shows the (laughs) eye was encircled by a miles-wide swirl of clouds at the center of the storm. I'm just seeing an awesome cyclone, one man commented on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the eye was seen in a cloud formation scientists refer to as I, the eye of the storm. Such eyes are typically the quiet center of rotating storm winds. All tropical cyclones have spinning bands of wind and rain. At the center, there's a calm spot called the eye. Science news for students reports. Surrounding the eye are the strongest storms of the hurricane or cyclone, the eye wall. I like this idea, the eye wall. I don't know where that belongs in our playlist, but it's possible. The eye wall gets its name because the clouds often pile up higher around the eye. It creates a wall of clouds around the eye when the storm is seen from above. Well, boys, you've had a chance to take a look at this photo. Hopefully our listeners have too. What do you think? Is it a monster in the ocean? Mm. I mean, it, it looks it looks like a very kind eye. Doesn't it look like kind of a friendly whale? Yeah, yes. I get I get elephant. You know what I mean? I get oh, like an yeah. elephant's eye almost. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm looking at this picture and I think this is something that I would have to uh attribute to a little something called pareidolia. Do you guys know what pareidolia is? Is that yes. the tendency to see faces and things? That's the tendency tendency to see things in inanimate objects, especially uh, like geological rock formations or clouds. Uh, stuff of this nature, our mind uh, sort of imprints upon these things and image, and it's hard to shake loose. And once you see that eye, like in this picture, it's hard to not go, that's an eye. Yeah. But I mean, Bryce, you're going to refute science news for students and some guy on <laughs> well, Facebook. <laughs> you know what? You're right. This is probably actually a water serpent, a very large there we go. water creature who's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's cool looking. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely it is cool, cool looking. looking. And, and it's really, I mean, in detail, it really does look very, it's like an eye. I mean, it is an eye. But I mean, they, they probably call it the eye of the storm for a reason. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yes. You know. Um, I can't believe the I can't believe the BCC boys are starting this episode off with looking at clouds. It's a story <laughs> of looking at clouds. <laughs> Only well, to go up from here. <laughs> yeah, get ready. Uh, we're about to kick things up a notch. We're headed into the unidentified flying object territory with this story from the News Observer. Um, this is being this was uh, getting kicked around last month a lot um, mysteri- about mysterious red trails. Uh, talk of UFOs ignited by mysterious red trails seen in darkness off the outer banks. This is in North Carolina. A man taking time lapse images. You'll be able to see this and in the Instagram as well of the Milky Way also captured a series of odd light swirls in the night sky. And the resulting footage has ignited talk of UFO activity off of North Carolina's outer banks. Artist Wes Snyder is well known for this in the Southeast for his coastal photography, particularly image taken at night. But even he is at a loss for what the rotating red ta- trails might be. The lights are seen multiple times in his video, always along the horizon, and they appear to be circling something. Snyder says the movement defies easy explanation when taking into account the time-lapse process. Each photo was taken with a 10-second exposure with one second in between. I've caught thousands of plane trails and never have any of them look like this, so I'm certain they're not your typical aircraft, Snyder told McClatchy News. 
I've caught these trails before in several other time lapses, but I've yet to figure out what kind of plane possibly has these capabilities. Whatever they are, they have some incredible maneuverability. The photos were taken between 8 and 10 p.m. on September 27th with cameras facing west toward the mainland. Snyder says the trails were visible for 10 to uh, the trails were visible for 10 to 20 minutes. The video was only recently posted online because of the time it takes to edit images simultaneously by three cameras, he said. We, the Outer Banks, are not too far away from a bombing range in eastern North Carolina is known for lots of military aircraft. My bet is that it's military aircraft training over the Pamlico Sound. All I want to know is how can I get a ride in whatever it was, he added. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, that probably checks out some sort of military aircraft, like, uh, you know, maybe some sort of highly maneuverable drone. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Sort of helicopter based thing that is able to, you know, make tight turns and things like that. Um, yeah. I mean, red, red light to me says aviation, too. Oh, right. You know what I mean? But although the fact that he says that he's seen thousands of, of uh, plane trails, because he's clearly he's someone who does this regularly. So. I don't know. It's definitely mysterious. I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, look, we know UAPs and UFOs are a uh, constant over military bases. Uh, mm-hmm. So this could be something anomalous. Absolutely for sure. Do you know? I mean, if you just stop and think about how many thousands of reports about UFOs and UAPs come in on a yearly basis and those represent just a fraction of actual sightings only 10 percent of of ufo encounters or or people seeing ufos are actually reported to organizations like mufon or c seti so 90 percent of this stuff really goes uh unreported so it wouldn't surprise me in the least that this could be one of those strange lights very interested in what's taking place at the military base below yeah, I think the lights are the photos, the screen grabs are cool. I put one up in the in for you guys to check out. Um, and I think it's compelling. I mean, this is a guy, professional photographer. This is what he does. Time lapse night nighttime photos. First time he's seen something strange. Sounds like he's not necessarily a into the UFO hype, which is fair. That's fine. Uh, but anytime there's some weird recurring mysterious light happening, you know I'm signed up for that. Yeah, we love our mysterious lights here over on the BCC. Mm-hmm. We got I will keep an eye on this story and see if anything develops. All right, staying in the realm of UAPs. <laughs> turn this, the page, Grandpa, turn the page. This just <laughs> dropped hours before we started recording. Um, this is a last-minute addition to the news dump. Oh, Ob- Obama's presidential library has thousands of files on UFOs. A response to a FOIA request has revealed... The library is setting on a possible treasure trove of documents about UFOs. And this is uh, from Vice.com. The Barack Obama Presidential Library claims it has 3,440 pages and 26,271 electronic files possibly related to the existence of UFOs and related phenomenon. We know this thanks to a Freedom of Information Act request filed by John Greenwald Jr. Now, that is a ufologist, conspiracy theorist name, if I've ever heard one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Greenwald Jr. is of the Black Vault, a clearinghouse of declassified government documents. Greenwald asked the Presidential Library for documents and communications about the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program and photos and videos of unidentified flying objects, unidentified aerial phenomena slash phenomenon, and the Advanced Aerospace Weapon Systems Application Program. These are all acronyms that you must be used to by now if you've been listening to BCC for the past four plus years. I know. They should have just told them to go to the Skinwalker website. There you go. In response to the the FOIA (laughs) request, the library said it had thousands of documents that might be possibly related to this request. Might be possibly. (laughs) Might be possibly related. uh, And that it would take some time to sort through all of it. Interest in the UFOs has risen in recent years, as we all know, following the release of U.S. Navy videos detailing encounters with unexplained aerial phenomenon. Last year, the Pentagon released a report claiming that not everything seen in the sky could be explained away with current science. Obama himself is on record saying that UFOs are real. Uh, When it comes to aliens, 
There are some things I just can't tell you on the air, he told Reggie Watts during a 2021 <laughs> appearance on The Late Show with James Corden. But uh, what is true is that there are there is footage and records of objects in the sky that we don't know exactly what they are, how they move, their trajectory. They did not have an easily explain- explainable pattern. So I think that people still take that seriously and uh, try to figure out what it is with thousands <laughs> of documents. Excellent, Obama. Michael. Well, Michelle's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> little rust. It's a little rusty, but I dusted it off <laughs> with thousands of documents to go through and presumably redact. It might be some time before Greenwald Jr. sees a proper response to his request as is often the case with this kind of material. It's also possible that the documents are mostly procedural and contain either nothing interesting or information we already know. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid pursued the truth of H- of you. I almost said HBO. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is this cable company? And where can I see these nudes? It's, it's um, not TV. It's not TV. <laughs> I've heard it's yeah. not TV. What is it? It's HBO. Uh, 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 Harry Reid pursued the truth of, it, of UFOs relentlessly in and out of office. Former staffer Reeds told Politico the quest didn't pan out. After a while, the consensus was we really couldn't find anything of substance. They produced reams of paperwork. After all of that, there was really nothing there that we could find. Hmm. Wow. I doubt that. Yeah. yeah, Listen, yeah was- <laughs> Barack, if you're listening, Mr. Former President, come on the show. This is the place. This is a safe space for you to uh, finally give us disclosure. So, hey, you know. there you go. He's Invitation. probably a yeah. listener, right? He's probably yeah, a listener. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I like the show. I like what you guys do on the show. I like what you guys do. <laughs> Riley, great music. Uh, Michael, haven't seen you in a while. Uh, need to get you a job. Um, <laughs> um, uh, uh, True Blood was on when I was in office. Um, <laughs> Uh, I do love the idea that, like, if you want to get people into a presidential library, tell them that they can go look at some UFO documents. Totally. I mean, yeah, that'll do it. That's got to be in Chicago, right? Where is that going up? Probably Chicago. I would, I would think, think, think so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. They usually – I'm not sure. Do they get to choose wherever they want them or I, do they have to, like, no, sort of lobby, I, lobby I, a state for their – Well, I think that. But also I think, like, you know, it's always yeah. connected. Like, you know, Reagan's is out here. Yeah, you know, yep. um, it's always connected to their like home state and stuff. Yeah, so Chicago's a good bet, probably. I guess we could quick googs it, but I'm not going no, to. Um, too all right, too. yeah. Well, uh, I have one more story for you guys. Um, excuse me, I have the Lacroix bubbles in my throat. Um, <laughs> haunting news, very slow. Not a lot of ghost news out there, and Bigfoot news also a little slow. Uh, Biggie seems to be laying low right now. I'm hoping that'll change soon, obviously, Bryce. Mm -hmm. Um, But Bill Kirby at the Augusta Chronicle didn't let that stop him from writing a piece on a local Bigfoot-like creature that was spotted back in the late 70s and remains a mystery to this day. This is uh, near the um, previous story about the red lights this is in south carolina so north carolina's neighbor to the south here we go this is sort of a mini story of high strangeness what stalked the woods and left large footprints in 1977 it was big news in hollywood in early 1977 and they called it saluda squatch this hollywood was the small community in south carolina saluda saluda county north of aiken the Saluda Squatch was whatever was leaving large, bare footprints in the soft dirt of the woods near Lake Murray. The name was a combination of Saluda and Sasquatch, the legendary Bigfoot creature, the pack northwest. The footprints measured about 14 inches long and 7 inches wide and were mostly discovered on the farm of D.W. Barry. Hmm. This local event followed many around the South, including national news attention towards mysterious footprints in Fort Mill, South Carolina, more than 100 miles away. Now, the Fort Mill tracks didn't scare anyone, but Saluda had a different story. Three teenagers Mm -hmm. publicly identified as Mark Berry, Donald Nicholson, and Mike Berry said they found the prints after hearing a shriek in the wooded area. 
Hmm. The scream was real loud, said Mark Berry. It echoed all over the woods. It was like a big truck breaking. It was also frightening, and the boys said they lit out after they heard it. It was not the first time such chilling sounds had come from the woods. Residents later told the Augusta Chronicle it was a sound familiar through the years, and most figured it was a panther or perhaps a bear. In February 1977, however, they found footprints and the Chronicle dispatched assistant city editor Jim Austin, a former state editor, to the scene. Now, some Saluda residents questioned the coincidence that the footprints were found about a week after the 1976 movie Sasquatch had played in a Saluda movie theater. Oh, uh, I see. Austin also here. found the co- county sheriff's department was not wasting manpower on an investigation of what it considered to be a hoax. A this hoax. is the same thing that happened to Chupacabra. Some lady, you know, uh, they were playing it in the species <laughs> in uh, in a Puerto Rican theater, and boom! About a week later, a lady sees a uh, you know alien with spikes and sucking chicken's blood very much like the <laughs> creature from species so uh, also just a classic bcc episode if you want to hear bryce recount the plot of species <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> it takes a few uh, left turns that one oh, um well look anytime i i anytime i can find a new local sasquatch story with I'm teenagers on, of course with teens and they're calling it the saluda squatch this is great um you know I do think, though, the the thing that has some truth to it is this idea that a, the sound had been coming from the woods for years. Mm, yeah, right. I'm just saying, Bryce, season four, maybe you guys got to head over to Saluda County. Hey, man, I, you know, Carolina. I would love to see. I, I know there are quite a few reports that do come from, uh, you know, North and South Carolina. So it would not surprise me in the least, man. Those are mysterious woods out there. There's yeah, a weird they are. feeling to those woods. Yeah. They really are. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's definitely something that can hide out there. And, and you know, like you're saying, Riley, they're just creepy. Mm-hmm. Riley, yeah. you're out on the East Coast right now, aren't you? I am. I'm in the, I'm in the Southeast. Ooh. I, I'm, uh, what cryptid are you closest to right now? Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe he's called Florida Man. And, uh, oh, nice. He's, Florida, he's mysterious and unpredictable. Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. I, uh, I'd been told all week that I was going to Miami and I was very excited and I, I packed my, my swimsuit and, and my tank tops and I was all prepared for uh, a, a fun few days in Miami and I showed up to the airport and I got to my terminal and it said Orlando and I was very confused. You're like, that. wait a minute, wait yep. a minute. Two very so, different cities very, here. Orlando is <laughs> a lovely place, very much not Miami. So I called production and I was like, uh, did you guys fly me to the wrong city? And they were like, no, who told you you're going to Miami? And I was like, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> Miami, Delaware. <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> now, I'm, not, I'm not even in Orlando. I'm actually in a uh, sort of outskirts suburb called Apopka. So oh, nice, nice. I, I'm, I'm out here looking for the Apopka Squatch myself. Uh, hey, you, I wonder how far you are from Mayaka. Probably you're not. You're close to the... Not you're, very. Well, yeah. I'm going to take a look. You, I'm deep you might in be... Central Florida right now. I'm at, uh, a, uh, I'm at a Hampton Garden Inn next to a gas station. Hmm. And uh, not the poolside vacation I was expecting. You might have to do some nighttime squatching, Riley. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll What's the name of the town out. you're in? I'm looking uh, it up on Google right now. A popka, a p o k something. I don't know. Yes, I'm sure we have listeners there. So head on down Probably. to that uh, Hampton and go yeah. find him. Yeah, come find me. <laughs> Let's party. Yeah, you're so, only no. two hours and seventeen minutes away by toll road to the Skunk Cape. So you should you should head down there. All right, I'll talk Take to you guys later. I'm calling, I'm calling a lift. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, it's time for this week's story of high strangeness. All right, Club Scouts, it's time for this week's story of high strangeness brought to you by none other than Mr. Bryce O. Johnson. Bryce, Riley and I are going to sit back and let you take it away. Great, great. I love it. Let's do it. You know, as you guys know, I've done a lot of stories on high strangeness by now, stories on 
UFOs, Bigfoots, beasts, aliens, abductions, altered states of consciousness, and the whatnot. But I've never really done a story about a haunted house, and I'm not sure why. For some reason, it always felt a little, I don't know, kitschy, I guess. No, Ooh, we know the, we, we know, sorry to interrupt. We know the reason. It's because you were scared of ghosts yeah, and you're scared afraid. that if you write you're a, of ghosts. you're scared of ghosts okay. and you're okay. scared that you're if you write a story. You're basically ruining it. Yeah, that's true. That's all very true. <laughs> and, and, uh, story, maybe we'll get to that. Come for you. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, you don't know how to, you're going to write a story and they'll come for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking. Okay, that's it. That's the story. Uh, <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Check your backyard for a dog, man. Oh Maybe God, he's already is, there. So fucking true. Oh, I'm so ashamed of myself. <clears throat> but, you know, and perhaps the reason I haven't done a story of high strangeness on a haunted house or ghost is because it feels like almost everybody has a ghost story, right? Or at least know someone who does. But looking back, ghosts and haunted places were my first gateway hit into the paranormal. Whenever that big, beautiful bookmobile came rolling around the corner, I knew they had some cool-ass ghost books for me (laughs) that I had asked to check out. I couldn't wait to flip through and check out all those women in white ghost pictures. Were they real? I bet they were. Ghosts were a way to explore my questions about what happened when we die. Gradually, I moved on from the cheap thrills of ghostly apparitions to things like the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, Mothman... From there, it was on to UFOs, aliens, abductions, and as you all well know, it didn't stop there. But I'll always have a soft spot for a good ghost story or a haunted house, but not like this. The Lees were a family who loved the outdoors. Stephen, Beth, and their two boys had always loved living in the Colorado woods. After renting a place here and there, they finally found their dream home and took the plunge as newly minted homeowners. Their purchase? A magnificent five-acre parcel with a beautiful two-story log cabin situated amongst the Ponderosa Pines just north of Colorado Springs in a place called the Black Forest. Now, don't let the name fool you. Early pioneers named it the Black Forest because of the color of the dark timber on the Ponderosa Pines. Or did they? The old owner quickly and quietly exchanged keys with the Lees, and I'm guessing he might have said something like, Good luck! whilst peeling out of the driveway. The first few weeks were were great. Moving in was tough, but it was worth it. This place had everything they could have ever asked for. Or did it? Okay, I'm going to stop doing that now. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Please don't stop yeah. <laughs> That is until... Michael... One day we came home and it was like the 4th of July in our living room and bedroom. We had all kinds of lights flashing through and it sounded like people stomping across the roof. We would lay in bed at night and hear chains rattling. One night we woke up and heard orchestra music. Strange things started happening every day. Beth recalled. And it didn't stop there for the Lees frightening phenomena of all sorts and kind was pervading their lives. Day, night, inside, outside, shit was going down. The two boys were seeing stuff in their bedroom when they were trying to go to sleep. Strange lights and guess what else? Anybody want to take a guess? Bedrooms, dark night, shadow people. Shadow, people. Yeah. shadow figures, that's exactly right. Wherever hey. there's a small child's room, there will be shadow figures also things would just mysteriously turn on and off things like lights and electronics even appliances would without warning just start going crazy but aside from all of that it was the smell that was probably the worst from seemingly out of nowhere a noxious chemical like smell would fill the room it was so bad they would begin to gag and their and their eyes would water What about you boys? I mean, is there something that would push you over the edge? What would the final straw be for you to get out of a haunted house? I think ghost farts is pushing it. You know what I mean? I think if like a, a, you know, a giant ghost dump like that would make me one out. Riley, Um, you seem pretty tolerable. What about you? I think like a knife 
flying through the kitchen would be the mm, last straw for me. Yeah, and yeah. sticking into the wall like in an old seventies movie. You know, totally. That's yeah. If you opened thing. up the cupboards and there was just a spinning portal and like a cow and a ticking clock, like a pocket watch, <laughs> right. and, yes. and then like a, a you know like a door frame just floating around like yep. that's yep. that I would probably get out get out of if I it. saw that. Well, you, you know, gotta you go. Think- you got to go at that point. And, you know, you'd think that would do it for a guy like Mr. Lee as well. But apparently that's not the case. You see, Stephen was a logical, pragmatic, practical man. There had to be a reason for all this tomfoolery, these shenanigans. There's no such thing as ghosts. So Stephen does what any sane person would do. He tries to record what's happening to him and his family. Now, so what year does this sue. take place? Sorry. This what, is 1991. Year? Okay, okay. Uh, Just okay. trying to picture the video equipment here. Yep. Yeah, 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 of course. Well, he hired a small security firm to help him set up the cameras throughout the house, inside and outside, complete with video surveillance and motion detectors. He was determined to catch the miscreants in the act and put a stop to all this madness. But nothing stopped. In fact, just the opposite. There seemed to be an uptick in activity. His sensitive system was constantly being triggered when and where there was no one around. As a matter of fact, over the next few months, they had dozens of break-ins, and begrudgingly, the El Paso County Sheriff's Department would come to the property to check it out, but never found any criminal goings-ons. With all this expensive equipment and time being wasted, the family just about drained their funds trying to catch whoever was causing the activity. And this is something I know personally because I had a false alarm not too long ago and the cops came out and I had to talk to them through my ring doorbell and then a bill came in the mail for a false alarm. And I said, what the hell is going on with this? Yeah, I I think baby might have triggered the motion detector alarm in the house or something, but that's never happened before. So I I, I don't know. I'm still very curious as as about it. but, But anyway, I got a bill in the mail because, you know, if you have a false alarm, the, the, in California, they charge you for it, and then you have to take an online class about alarm what? Uh, etiquette and safety. So, <clears throat> oh my, how much? How much was oh the my. bill? Oh, hundreds of dollars. I was pretty. What? I, oh, and I think the first time they might. Um, oh, if you take the class, they they don't bill you. So, of course, you're going to take the. How online. was that class? Will you please write us a special story oh, by strangeness no, about no, what you gonna, learned? <laughs> No, we're going to move on from this. Uh, (laughs) But you know what Steven's security system did catch? Ghosts. Well, blurry ghosts, of course. And odd occurrences like light streaks, strange shadows, and even haunting translucent faces in the windows and mirrors. It took a while, but Steven finally came around to the idea that something paranormal was going on in his home. Now... Let me ask you guys again. At this point, what do you do? You're running out of money. Your family's stressed and exhausted. What's the next step here? Call in an expert. Mm -hmm. Paranormal Mm -hmm. investigator time. Well, Mm -hmm. I'll do you one better. You call the television show Sightings. That's right. Sightings was an American paranormal and news television show that originally aired in the 1990s. The show began as a special titled The UFO Report, Sightings on October 17th, 1991, as well as eventual follow-up reports, Ghost Report, and The Psychic Experience. After the special broadcast to high ratings, it went forward into weekly TV production as the program Sightings. The show featured everything from UFOs to ghosts to Bigfoot in an investigative news format and was hosted by reporter Tim White. Now, the show eventually was canceled in 1997, leaving a vacuum for another program of the same ilk. And in 2003, a program called Unexplained Mysteries debuted in syndication. Although it didn't have the same hosts, hosted news format like Sightings did, it was produced by many of the same individuals involved with Sightings and sometimes even reused footage and graphics from the earlier program. You guys remember sightings, or I know oh, I know totally. we all remember. Yeah, sightings was like the OG. Mm-hmm. S- sightings was where, like, I have vivid memories of like watching my very first like alien abduction story on sightings in my living room. Yeah, as a kid and being, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like middle school at this point. I was t- 
terrified. Of right. <laughs> terrified. Yeah, they, they did a great job on that show. I remember it too. And I, I'm a big fan of unexplained mysteries, but sightings, it, it, that takes it back for me. The first place I ever saw an alien gray depiction was obviously the cover of Communion. Yeah. And the second at, at Oak Park Shopping Mall at Walden Books. And the second place I ever saw a depiction of an alien gray was on sightings. Right. Right. Yeah. OG, man. Well, the sightings crew brought in psychic ghostbuster Echo Bodine, who quickly identified a whole bevy of activity, including a threatening male spirit in the living room, as well as at least 20 other individual spirits. She judged the level of otherworldly activity in the house as monumental. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. While the crew was filming a discussion with Echo and Beth at the kitchen table, Beth felt as though someone was holding her down. Suddenly, a member of the crew felt something go into her, and her chest, arms, and legs became numb. All of this, of course, was captured on video camera by the sightings crew. Now, can you guys imagine you're just some wet-behind-the-ears camera assistant from Cal State looking to break into the biz when the next thing you know, you get a call from your roommate's ex-boyfriend, Derek, who runs B-Camera on some stupid go show produced by Henry Winkler. And of course you say, yes, because a lady's got to eat. You don't give a fuck about ghosts, but now you're smack dab in the middle of nowhere holed up in some Colorado house of horrors being possessed by the ghost of Ponderosa Pete and his gang of misfits. Well, wait. Henry Winkler produced sightings. That's right. That's, That's exactly amazing. right. Also, did you summon the ghost of Stan Lee to write that last paragraph? <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, they got her out of there and away to safety. And it was really only until she was far away from the house that she started feeling a little bit better. After that little spectacle, the sightings crew returned six months later. Yeah, they did. With another renowned psychic, Peter James who immediately felt a pull of powerful psychic energy on the property. While touring the house, James was overwhelmed by the burning chemical odor mentioned earlier and suddenly asked if the name Howard meant anything to the family. Steve and Beth were taken aback at the familiar name of their dear friend who was like a, like a grandfather to Beth. As they revealed more about the old friend, the chemical smell began to make sense. Turns out, Howard's son, Howard Jr., died of a drug overdose in the 60s. And Howie Jr.'s best friend was a pharmacist and would sneak the two drugs to get high together. Well, psychic Peter James felt that Howard Jr. entered into a rift in space-time on the Lee's property because he wanted to somehow contact his father maybe to apologize for the chemical burns on his nice new pleather sofa. What do you guys think about this idea of a, of a rift in space-time and that perhaps that's what's letting in all these ghosts? That it's, huh? that it's, it's a drug lab? It's like a meth lab from the past crossing over? Well, it's no, he, the, the psychic Peter James was just saying there's a rift here. Right. And c- ghosts can come to this area, you know, ghosts of the past, present, future. They they flock to this area because it, it it's an easy access portal for them. It's a rift in in the otherworldly space time. I mean, I can see it. I mean, we often talk about how ghosts are maybe like some sort of echo, you know, of uh, consciousness or, or life. And so, you know, like some rooms are more reflective and more echoey than others. So maybe mm. there's some spaces that are, are more reflective and, and echoey of the sort of residual energy that's left behind by uh, consciousness, especially when it's extermin- extinguished in a traumatic way, such as uh, through, you know, serious drug use. Mm, mm. So, yeah. Well, at this point, Oh, sorry, Michael, did you, yeah, did you I, have a thought on, on space time riffs? Well, I will say this, I'm going to stop calling it my, <laughs> my I'm going to stop calling my spirit a soul. And I'm going to start calling it a future ghost. (laughs) (laughs) I like like that. that. I like that. Future ghost. That's good. Now, at this point, Stephen Lee and his family are hardened believers in the paranormal. And Stephen murmurs to himself, Michael. Well, there's no way on God's earth he could have known about Howard. (laughs) Well, in the ensuing months, paranormal experts abound came to visit the Lee home deep in the Black Forest tempted and tantalized by the newly formed rumors that a log cabin 
deep in the black forest of Colorado was one of the most haunted locations in America. Psychics, mediums, even Hopi shamans all agree, this place is haunted as fuck. There were some hot spots to be sure. The master bedroom seemed to be the heart of the haunting, with the closet of the master bedroom suspected to be a portal to the other side. Why is it always in the closet? There was also the hundred-year-old mirror in the master bedroom that was an endless source of photographs of apparitions and floating faces. Hell, they even got their state representative involved in the matter. That's right. The Lees contacted State Senator Charles Duke and invited him to come and experience the poltergeist activity for himself and to take some photographs of his own. Duke accepted and captured several anomalous images with his own camera, including a very clear image of an apparition of a dog. Ooh, what kind? Uh, I'm not really sure, but you can go <laughs> ahead and read your next line now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that you, Muffin? Why, it is you. Come here, old boy. Come and give Daddy a smoochie from his favorite poochie. Intrigued by his own findings, Senator Duke contacted the FBI, who declined to investigate, but told the Lees that poltergeists might be the cause, to which they responded, No shit, Sherlock. And that's the story of the Lee home deep within the Black Forest of Colorado. Whoa, I never heard about the Lee cabin, the haunted Lee cabin. Yeah, you know what's interesting about this, and I did watch some of the old sightings clips and some old videos. I had on a it, feeling were... that maybe you just were watching sightings, and then you're <laughs> like, "I'll make this a story of my strangeness." You know, it, it, what what it seems to happen is like the psychics would come in and they would focus in on like a ghost or like you know like uh, Echo Bodine. She focused in on that malevolent, malevolent male, whereas psychic Peter James focused in on on this old guy Howard, but but they were also getting so many other spirits as well. It just, it seemed like they could only, you know, they were only trying to parse out and trying to figure out little by little what they could. But I don't know. To me, it just seems like there might be a tear in space time here and allowing whatever is over on the other side uh, to come to this place, almost like a beacon in the dark night. You know, perhaps this log cabin was a blinking red light to otherworldly spirits, lost souls. I don't know. Mm. Some sort of uh, black lodge, perhaps? Mm, yes. 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 A red room <laughs> in a black lodge, maybe? <laughs> well done. Very well done. <laughs> um, first of all, if your name is Echo Bodine, you can pretty much only be a psychic paranormal. <laughs> totally. Or a dolphin. <laughs> or a <laughs> yes, dolphin. It's yeah. one of the yeah. two. Yeah. Um, also, don't don't put hundred year old beers in your bedroom. Just don't I mean, do that. Se- I mean, seriously, just just get rid of that thing. That's for yeah. damn sure. But new mirrors, new mirrors. I mean, hit, hit the IKEA. You know, there's only so much Sage can do, right? It's like <laughs> right. I mean, at some point you just got to get the fuck out. Apparently, they still live in the cabin to this day, and it it still really? is a hotbed of activity. I I'd have to check up on that, but that's what I've been told. Oh, I wonder if the ghost pup is still there. I would like mm-hmm. to have a ghost dog. That would be pretty cool. Ghost dog would be pretty sweet, right? Yeah. I'm totally fine with a ghost dog. Oh, did I tell you guys, speaking of ghost dogs, I was walking the dogs up here in the hills a couple weeks ago, about a week ago maybe, and it was dark. And Zola, like, stopped in her tracks and, like, wagged her tail and got like all excited as if she were looking like no to nose with n- nose to nose with another animal. Weird. And there was nothing there and there was nobody else on the street. There was nothing up the hill. It was really strange. It was like she was reacting to something that I couldn't see, but like yeah. she was excited about it. Cool. Yeah, man. It's that super spectrum theory, right? Like this stuff exists just outside of our periphery, whether audio or uh, visual. And, you know, dogs, obviously, uh, different animals are able to see beyond the the human spectrum and, and sense and see and smell uh, things that we just can't. What if it was like I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, she sees a ghost dog. And then if if I could see what she was seeing, it was like this, this like 
ten foot tall, hideous monster with like a gaping maw. <laughs> it's like the grossest, <laughs> scariest thing ever. Nice. Oh, must be a ghost puppy. Um, yeah, great. You know, we got a request earlier this year to do more uh, ghost stories here, uh, stories of high strangeness, and I say after that one, let's go for it. Yeah, the- well, and, and absolutely. You know, to, to speak to your point, Michael, I think this came from one of our listeners. I remember writing it down on my episode ideas list, and I was like, "This will do. This will do just fine." All right. Well, what do you think it is, Bryce? Like, yeah. what, do, you, do you think that this this house is some sort of a Space time rift, or I mean, I think it was. I think it was probably haunted before the Lees moved in, Uh, and I, I I think once they moved in too, it it took a few moments for the house to envelop the family's energy and then use it as as a tool to to start manifesting some of this phenomena. I I do think that you know there is there is an existence after we die, after we go on, and I you know perhaps there is a, a portion or an essence of the soul or spirit or future ghost as Michael likes to call it, that can come reverberate back to us. And, you know, maybe it's just like a dark sea out there and there's these little spots on earth, these where, you know, whether they're ley lines that connect or whether they're, you know, vortexes is, or, you know, the Hopi shaman that they, that came and looked at the place, he called it a rainbow vortex where our world meets the other. And, and, you know, perhaps these locations have an energy that these ghosts or otherworldly apparitions can pick up onto and flock to in a moment's notice, you know, like, uh, using just quantum time travel. Mm, wow. Have you guys watched any of Life After Death on Netflix that just dropped the, the this past oh, weekend? No, I've got to no, do that. Yet. That's no. now that's that's on the list. Yeah, Tyler Henry, the Hollywood medium. Um it's really good. Yeah. Uh I'm only a couple episodes in. Our listeners should definitely check it out. Um you know, it's always tough when it's something that's edited, but like he seems to get some hits yeah. and really, if really affects people. Um, it's interesting. You should check it out for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's also like a, a mystery in his own life that he's solving and not just like helping people connect with the other side. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh, I love that. Yeah. There's, there's something to it, man. Absolutely. And there's good evidence out there that, that, you know, something does survive uh, death. Oh, I hope so. I kind of don't. I mean, yeah, that's that, yeah. It's a win-win, right? I've always looked at it as a win-win. If there's something, if there's something else out there after this, then fucking great. If there's not, if it's lights out, then you won't know it to be sad about it in the first place. Yeah. So it'll yeah. just fucking be like before win, you were win. born. Totally. Yeah, a little ego death won't be so bad. Just return the energy to the source. That's there. Fun. It is. I'm yeah, but I like if we do survive, uh, like society survives. I kind of want to see what the future looks like, and I want to be able to travel back in time. Think about all the cool time travel powers you get, and like omniscience you get mm-hmm. when you die, mm-hmm. and yeah. you're, you're, you know, and you're a future ghost. Yeah. Hey, maybe true. you did travel back in time, powers. and you're and you're incarnated as Michael McMillan. Maybe maybe future ghost I, Michael is like, I'm going to the year 1978, and we're gonna yes, fucking do this. I, I'm good fully on board year. with this. Pretty much the peak of Western civilization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's I can true. see why you'd I could see why we'd want to come here. That's a solid choice. I was That's the also- omen of the of the downfall of society. <laughs> it's, it's all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> this also just this always makes I love John L. Tenney's thing about ghost planets. When he brought that up, it just blew my mind. Just oh, like the, yeah. the logical yeah. conclusion. Like if there's ghosts of people, then there's ghosts of societies. And if there's ghosts of societies, this ghost of nations, if this ghost of nations, this ghost of entire planets, yeah. just whole ghost planets just flying yeah. through the universe. That's a, I love that thought. It's really cool. Well, I think that wraps up another session here at the old Bigfoot Collectors Club. Great job, Bryce. Gave us Thank a lot you. to think about this week. Before we say goodbye, why don't you remind people about Expedition Bigfoot Season 3? And then, Riley, if you got anything to plug, let's hear it. Yeah, check it out. Uh, Season 3 premieres 9 p.m. Eastern on the pre-show New Evidence with Dr. Jane Goodall, March 20th, this Sunday on the Travel Channel and Discovery+. Plus. Awesome. And I would like to plug 
our email, bigfootcollectorsclub at gmail.com, because we've gotten uh, a couple of messages lately on the Patreon asking about where to send us things. So send us things there, even if it's not your own personal story of high strangeness. We we love getting your letters. So if you've got some yeah. weird thoughts on your mind or you have a story you'd like us to cover, just shoot us an email. Also, people have been asking about if we have a P.O. box where they can send us stuff. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I bet you do, Michael. Uh, oh, it's yeah. P.O. Box 11, uh, 110. Uh, look, I'll put it up on the Instagram, okay? There is a, <laughs> it'll be in the show notes. I don't, hold on. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, I'll be honest. I'm the guy who goes to get the mail. I've been going a lot less during the pandemic, but I will, if you scroll down in the show notes, I'm going to make a note right now to put put address in show notes um, yeah, it'll be there we love the we love the stuff that you guys send us and we do it is like a christmas post. post office box it really does feel like it's, christmas yeah, every I time have we all open that it. stuff on the side here but i can't it's, it's great guys, so anyways we don't know the address but well it'll, it'll be there you, if you want to send us something you can yeah you can do it in the show notes you're gonna yeah. have to write it down anyway yeah. um guys do me a favor too i have a new podcast mm. called slate your name where i sit down with other actors and we talk about the highs and lows of working in show business um, I'm really, really excited about the show. I'm really happy. If you, as you're listening to this, the first three episodes are out with Rachel Bloom is my first guest, then Janice Schmeeting, who you guys know and love, and then a guest that we haven't had on this show yet, Malcolm Barrett, who's in Timeless and The Boys and Better Off Ted. He's been in Great. a million things. Cool. Speaking of time travel, um, and then next week. Guess oh, yes. who's coming by the Number by four. the Slate Your Name Woo-hoo. Theater? Bryce Mr. Bryce Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, hear how I got started and some of my great stories of trials and tribulations. And believe me, uh, there's many. It's a great episode. Uh, I'm ex- I'm just I'm so excited about the show. And there's already been some love from the BCC community. Uh, do me a solid, please go over to at Slate Your Name Podcast on Instagram. Give us a follow. Follow the show. Um, I think you'll really, really like it. It's a different, it's a different show than this show, but um, it's. I think you'll really enjoy it. And, but it's and the same old Michael. It's that's the same right. old Michael. That's true. We've all um, come to know and love. Yeah, I mean, we've got some people ask us about the business and the industry. Um, also, big plus. Guess who did the theme music for the entire podcast? Big Riley Brady. Riley Bray. That's so there's right. a little bit of uh, BCC DNA in that in that show. Um, please go check that out. I would really, really appreciate it. And and give us a follow over there on Instagram. I'm posting old headshots and young headshots of my guests. It's fun. Great stories. You guys will love it. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, until next week, thank you. Good night. And go get regressed. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray and Michael McMillan and scored and engineered by Riley Bray. Our theme song, Come Alone, is by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. Do us a favor and support the show and unlock three bonus episodes every month by becoming a member of our Patreon, BCC The Other Side, which can be found at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club.